Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are starting a new unit in AP Biology, which is Unit 6, on gene expression and regulation. Our last unit, Unit 5, was on heredity. And heredity is discussing how do organisms pass down their heritable information, meaning their, well, their genes, their special code of DNA. How, does, how is that passed on from one generation to the next? And how does that process produce the great variety of living things that we have on Earth today. So that's two things that we discussed in our last unit. But in this unit, we're still talking about genes, but we're getting more into the molecular biology of genes, meaning that we are studying how genes are actually expressed. Okay, We talked about um, in our last unit how genotypes produce phenotypes, right? But in this unit, we're getting into how that actually occurs, okay? How does a cell or an organism, organism take its DNA and use those instructions in that special molecule in order to carry out functions, in order to produce a phenotype, to produce traits? That's one of the things that we're going to be looking at in this unit. And when is the right time to express those genes? And when is the wrong time to express those genes? And how are they regulated? All right, so that's what the focus of this unit is, gene expression and regulation. Okay, so where we have to start here is a little bit of review from unit one, where we're talking about DNA and RNA structure. So that is our topic for today. Um, in order to get all of that, okay, we need to really know what DNA is made of, what it looks like, and why that's important um, when it comes to gene expression. Okay, so as I was just saying, this first bullet point up here is that nucleic acids, DNA and RNA, deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid are the primary sources of heritable information. Okay, so this is the molecule, this is the, this is the book, this is the book of life, um, and then it's made up of only four letters and billions and trillions of combinations. Um, but those are the primary sources of heritable information, okay? They're a source of information in that they have a code that all life is able to follow. DNA is the genetic material that organisms inherit from parents. There was a long debate in the scientific community whether uh, the genetic material, um, because they knew the genetic material existed thanks to like, you know, Mendel and, uh, and Thomas Hunt Morgan and all those guys that we talked about, and even Charles Darwin, um, they, they knew that there was some kind of material that was passed from uh, parent to offspring, but they didn't know what it was. They thought it was maybe proteins, lipids, but now nah, it's DNA, the nucleic acid. And uh, what these units of DNA are, they're called, well, they're genes. They're discrete units of inheritance made of DNA. All right, they're little segments of this really long molecule. Oh, look, it's this picture again. Okay, we've uh, had this picture up and we talked about it a lot during our unit on uh, cell signaling or cellular communication, right? So there's a hormone... Um, and the hormone bonds to the receptor then causes a change, right? But we're not really focused on that part this time. What we're looking at is this, which is gene expression. DNA and RNA enable organisms to produce complex components from one generation to the next. So um, parents, and parents don't pass down their complex components from one generation to the next. They pass the instructions to build those complex components. You have to make your own protein. You have to make your own everything. But your parents help give your cells the instructions to do that. Okay? And using those instructions is called gene expression, the process through which organisms use instructions in DNA to replicate DNA and direct RNA and protein synthesis. And if you remember back from Unit 1, proteins do everything. Okay? So we're going to be talking about protein synthesis in this unit, how are proteins made from the instruction book of DNA, all right? So that's what this is really about. Um, so let's just recap a little bit of what DNA is made of, and let's talk about chromosomes a little bit. Uh, so this first bullet point I have is genetic information is stored and passed through generations through DNA. We know that already, and DNA is packaged into chromosomes made of a complex called chromatin, complex of DNA and protein. Right, so this is what I was saying before when we were talking about meiosis and mitosis, was that before you move, right, you got to pack up all your stuff together. You got to put it in boxes if you're moving from apartment to apartment or house to house, whatever. Um, you got to pack up all your stuff first before you move it. You can't just take it all in your arms and then drop it somewhere else, right? You got to pack up your stuff. Um, so 
That's what cells have to do before they divide as well. They have to condense their DNA and package it using, uh, using proteins um, in order to you know, condense it so that it can be easily split up. Okay? Uh, chromosomes are circular in prokaryotes. Okay? So they're, they're circle shaped. They're linear in uh, eukaryotes so that we get that kind of like X shape, but they're circle shaped in prokaryotes. And if you don't remember what prokaryotes are, those are single celled organisms without any organelles, membrane-bound organelles, or nucleus, okay? So circular chromosomes in prokaryotes, linear in eukaryotes like us, okay? Um, but another way that prokaryotes and eukaryotes can package up their DNA is through a, a structure called a plasmid, which is a small circular DNA molecule replicated separately from chromosomes, okay? So you can replicate the chromosomes all you want, um, but the plasmids, these little circular pieces of DNA that can make a big impact, especially when it comes to biotechnology and making new organisms express traits that were, they were not um, able to express before, um, plasmids become really, really, really important. Um, yeah, little circular pieces of DNA. Hey, and I'm going to ask you to remember that because they're going to become very relevant uh, later on in this unit. Okay, so let's, uh, let's review a little bit more about DNA and RNA structure. I even put 1.6 review because we've talked about a lot of this already. So um, if you need to go back and rewatch that or something, go for it. I'm going to be covering the basics here uh, for the remainder of this video. All right, so if you don't remember, DNA and RNA, deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid are polynucleotides. Poly meaning many, nucleotides meaning, well, nucleotides. Um, and... Each one of the monomers that makes up this polynucleotide is called a nucleotide. All right, so if we're looking at a picture of DNA up here, a uh, diagram of DNA, um, you can see that there's two chains of polynucleotide, or uh, two chains of nucleotides here. And each nucleotide is made up of a nitrogenous base, which I've outlined right here. You have A, G, T, or C, adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine, uh, five carbon sugar, Okay, so it's a pentose sugar, pentose meaning five, like a pentagon, right? And a phosphate group. Okay, so as we can see from this diagram over here, we got two chains of these uh, nucleotides, okay? And one is, uh, one is upside down in comparison to the other one. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, but what we have on this side, and I actually have my model right here. Uh, so here, here's, here's the model. Um, we got A and T matching up with G and C. These are our, what we call our uh, nitrogenous spaces, these yellow, green, and purple, or not purple, blue and uh, red components, okay? But this brown components over here, okay? This is representing what we call the sugar phosphate backbone, okay? So this is the backbone of the DNA. Um, if I were to unravel this, okay, you would see that these are kind of the sides of the ladder and the nitrogen spaces kind of make up the rungs of the ladder. Okay, but more about these nucleotides. Uh, we, they fall into two categories. They're either pyrimidines or purines. Pyrimidines, uh, which are the bases of C, T, and U, are nucleotides that have two nitrogenous bases. Or excuse me, they have, uh, excuse me, they have one six-membered ring. All right, oof, got to remember that. All right, so pyrimidines have one six-membered ring. Um, and I have a picture of them on the next page to take a look at it, but... Uh, yeah, they're made up of one ring. Purines are nucleotides that whose nitrogen spaces have a six-membered ring and a five-membered ring. So these are A and G. A and G have two uh, rings in their nitrogen spaces. So here's the pictures, okay? There's guanine, there's adenine, there's G, there's A. We can see there's two rings, but T and C, thiamine and cytosine, they only have one ring. So thus, those are pyrimidines, okay? Um, and... Interesting thing, super interesting thing about DNA that's conserved through all living things. That means this is true in every form of life that we've ever discovered. Their DNA, A matches with T, and U and RNA or matches with, or U or C, I should say. No? No, it's, excuse me. A pairs with T or U, and U and RNA, I was reading the sentence wrong, I apologize and C pairs with G, okay? Apple goes in the tree, car goes in the garage. That matches up in every single living thing that we've ever discovered, okay? A will always go with T or U, depending on if it's RNA, um, and C will always go with G, no matter what, 
Okay, that's what we call nucleotide base pairing, the base pairing rules. Apple goes in the tree, car goes in the garage. Okay, um, so as I was saying before, DNA, as you can see from my model here as well, consists of two polynucleotide strands and a double helix twisted ladder. Woo! Okay, the sugar phosphate backbone makes up the sides of the ladder, so like this brown strap that I was referring to before on my model, and the nitrogenous bases make up the rungs. So here they are. This is like a ladder. If you were to climb it, you'd go like, woo, twist it, right? Um, but yeah, so the sugar and the phosphate, the pentose sugar and the phosphate group in each nucleotide, they make up the, the, the sides of the ladder, while the nitrogenous bases, they bind together through hydrogen bonds, um, and remember, A only goes to T and G only goes to C. Um, they make up what we call the rungs. Okay? But RNA, okay, if I were to take apart this, uh, take apart this molecule, it'd be more representative of RNA. RNA is only one polynucleotide strand rather than two for DNA. Um, and instead of having thymine as the nitrogen space T um, in RNA, we have U, which is uracil. Hey, okay, let's wrap this up here. Uh, last thing that I want to talk about, I believe it's the last thing, yep, that I want to talk about is that DNA is anti-parallel, meaning that the strands are kind of oriented in opposite directions. One is kind of upside down to the other. They run parallel to each other, but they run in opposite directions, hence the word anti-parallel. One strand is what we call 5' prime to 3' prime, based on the numberings of the carbons and the pentose, uh, pentose sugar, and the other is 3' prime to 5' prime. Okay, that basically means you, you don't really t say like, oh, this one goes up and this one goes down because, you know, that doesn't really make sense if we're talking about cellular structures. Um, so the way that we orient DNA molecules is based on the position of the 5' prime and 3' prime carbon in these pentose sugars, right? So one strand is oppositely running to the other one. 5' prime to 3' prime, the other one goes 3' prime to 5' prime. Okay? All right, that's it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.